Now I've gone on a bit longer than I expected, but I wanted to put this in the way of how it all developed. Now it's perfectly true that there were internationalists, as I am, and many other people are, not just for Europe, but the whole world, who wanted to see international cooperation and not a form of either economic, military, or other domination, which of course can go on behind the scenes a bit. We wanted that. But the Treaty of Rome and its development, and in particular the tool of the so-called common market, which led together to a central legislative body, Oh, and I've forgotten, oh, there's a central court as well. So if there's an argument between the bits of the European so-called community, which is a good word, isn't it? Uh, you can go to the European Court of Justice and they will decide uh, who uh, is right and who is wrong. The European Court of Justice, yes. And they had to look at what was in the treaties, or the new treaties, which came bigger and stronger over wider and wider areas of policy and law. And this high court over the whole of the European uh, community and the whole of the European Union. European Union sounds a better word, community is a good word too, but it wasn't a union at all because it was a central organization, a central body of virtual dictatorship over which some of us had seen and other people have heard uh, there were great wars in the past. Now, I think I've gone on long enough for an introduction uh, for the moment, except to say um, that this has been extended over the years. Treaty after treaty has not diminished the central powers of what is, in effect, a central continental government. They've grown. Uh, the words uh, oh, are used quite a lot. The Treaty of Rome I've mentioned. There was the Treaty of Maastricht, the Treaty of this, the Treaty of that. Treaty of Maastricht put together foreign policy. If you have a single external boundary and a single agricultural policy, which makes all the prices and markets the same, you've got to have a policy, Australia with other countries, with trade, with customs, with anything to do with coming in and out of that boundary, by a single body, a single state. And can you change it? Can a party arise in one part of it, or even one nation, so oh, we don't like that? No, we can't. And I think the problem has been that so many good people who like to, like I do, uh, I went to, uh, to that camp I told you about earlier uh, ago, just after the war, to rebuild the youth camp, we had a school exchange. And I had a school with a exchange with a German boy in a German city. We still keep in touch. And, 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 uh, and have done for the last 30 or 40 years. That's real internationalism, not the sort which has been backed in effect by capital. Now, I know that I'm on the left wing, and there is a room for capital in the country. There's room for a degree of community, that's in a real sense of the word, not, th not this one, community coming together in health services, in the provision of roads, in the provision of good town planning. And we in Britain have not only pioneered the system, but we've pioneered many of those good things. We have a lot to lose. But you can't now. You go to any official in the country. You go to any local government. You go to any member of parliament and you're saying, that's a good idea, we can't do that. There's a European community rule about that. Regulation. Regulation and directive. That's another little feature of this curious organization, which uh, many people don't even know about. A regulation is all right. We would have regulations anywhere, uh, in any country, fire regulations, uh, motor car standards, anything you need. You need it in statute. You need rules to protect ourselves, to protect the community, to protect individuals, protect families, Public health, education, it's all there. Indeed, the more scientific, cleverer we get, the, probably the more you read. But that means standardization within the new European government and the newer European virtually single state insofar as it's gone. But that means 
great deal of difficulty because, of course, it is not necessarily founded uh, with a whole range of cooperatives which could be encouraged and indeed perhaps even given some advantages under this system. You might think that cooperation and community go together. Oh no, it's got to be done by competition because that is one of the fundamentals of the Treaty of Rome. Indeed, if you want to put it, and I put it, I think, fairly fairly on a wide basis, that is the difference between left and right, is it not? I'm not one somebody who, who's a bit on the left of the spectrum to say that we outlaw people having family businesses or even shares in, car, in firms, perhaps quite good big ones, as long as they're not too exploitative of their employees and don't get too much profit from uh, some advantage which they've gained. Yes, let there be some competition, of course, but let us keep it under control. At the same time, we don't want public services to be dominated by dictatorial people who says, yes, this will be health, that will be education. We have councils and we have votes and we have discussions and we have that sort of thing. Let's have that balance. But that's not a balance under the rules of the common market because any one country, you may be able to do it on a Europe-wide basis just about if, if they'll allow you to, but no one country can organise its civic basis, taxation, and there are taxes you've got to have because they're Euro taxes, they say you'll have them, and so on and so forth. You can't do that now. So I hope that I've gone uh, long, long enough now to state facts which I believe cannot be challenged. Um, they may be, uh, and I'd be welcome to perhaps amend uh, the, the charges which I've made. But uh, speaking almost, well, certainly quite extempore, and the notes that I had down I haven't wanted to look at because I think uh, a conversational style is probably better for the purposes uh, of the people who've asked me to make this talk. Uh, it's probably better than trying to, to go through the notes and make it a bit more mechanical. Uh, and so I'll close on this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanking whoever it is who's given me the opportunity to speak to you, whoever you are, uh, to, to say um, that subject to any challenge, uh, I should think at least 60 to 70 percent, and hopefully a bit more, of what I said is not only correct in fact, but also something that you could hardly disagree with. And therefore, I hope you'll disagree with the foundations and the actions of this so-called European Union, which I believe has done very much more harm than good and shouldn't do any more harm in the future.